And hello guys, it's Bobby Bear and I'm going to be this episode of the Today we're going to look at the Empire of SD working in the Royal Armed um, Forces. So let's have a look at that now. This is a video um, that was done by the Military of Defence. Clearly, every individual loss is a tragedy. However, the rate of suicide, both in the UK population and the armed forces, is much lower than you might expect. In the UK population overall, it's about 20 per 100,000. If we look at the armed forces, that rate's between 3 and 5 per 100,000, and in the case of the army, it's 5 per 100,000, so much less than the UK population from which the army are drawn. The causes for suicide are very complicated, but it's not a clear association between post-traumatic stress disorder that you will commonly end up committing suicide. It's really rare. The numbers overall are very low. There's a, we think there's a 4% rate in the armed forces. There's some slightly higher subgroups. So we think it's 5% in the reserves and up to 7% in combat troops. But you might expect that because of their exposure. Um, we've seen a recent increase in the number of people coming forward and asking for help with a diagnosis of PTSD. And overall that's a good thing. Not at all. Within the Defence Medical Services we see a range of mental health disorders. Anxiety, depression, um, a common disorder called an adjustment disorder. We see people who have problems with alcohol or drugs. PTSD is just one of the things we look after, but by far not the most common. Not getting treatment for a mental health problem is much more detrimental to your career than acknowledging you have some difficulties coming forward and asking for help. Of the almost 6,000 people we see in the year, the vast majority of people remain in the army and continue to do their job. If someone comes forward and asks for help, either via their GP or through the trim process or self-refer, they'll be assessed within one of our departments of community mental health. We have 16 in the UK and four in Germany. They'll be seen as part of a multidisciplinary team involving doctors and nurses and psychologists. And they'll get nice approved treatment, by which I mean treatment that's been approved by the UK so clinical guidelines for things like anxiety, depression or PTSD. If we already know about you, if we're already caring for you inside a Department of Community Mental Health, there's a transition period for the first six months of you being outside the military. We'll continue to look after you before we hand your care on to the NHS. The NHS has primacy for care of veterans. When someone leaves the armed forces, they have a final medical. There's a summary of their medical history while during their time in the military, which is handed to them for, they, for them to give to their civilian GP when they register. Um, it's dependent upon the patient giving permission to exchange that information of their medical stuff while in the forces to go out to the NHS. Reservists are able to, if they have a service-related illness, that's been associated with one of their deployments, they can be assessed at a service we have in Chilwell. It used to be called the Reserves Mental Health Programme, it's now called the Veterans and Reserves Mental Health Programme, where they'll be assessed. And if they're suffering from a psychological problem associated with their military service, they then can be seen in one of those 16 DCMHs I spoke about a moment ago. We permanently have deployed mental health assets in theatre. Um, there's a small team of nurses supported by a consultant psychiatrist who are based in Camp Bastion, who go out to all the forward locations. In, in the last year we have figures for, they saw over 150 people, 130 of whom remained in theatre, so were looked after and stayed with their unit doing their job. A very small proportion were so and well they needed to come back to the UK. Mental health disorders are invisible. You don't, there's not a wound to see. They haven't got a limp that one can spot. Um, we encourage people to come forward. We've recently run an anti-stigma campaign, making it quite clear that there's treatments available. The sooner you come forward, the quicker we can make you better. But also, this is not career limiting. Having an illness and not getting help for it will have an impact on your career, whereas coming forward and getting fixed doesn't.
the vast majority of the patients that we see in the community setting continue to work for the armed forces. Um, we saw in the most recent year almost 5,500 patients. Only 200 of those left the forces because of their ill health. The vast majority are, are maintained in the forces and keep their job. That's my line. Evil, evil, evil. Step aside, babe. Let a star do this. That's mine! <laughs>